Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. Are we live on everything? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thanks for joining us this Monday for one of our, I think to me this is a favorite topic of mine, um, but it can be very confusing and it can be very in depth. So we're gonna try to sum it up and not get to go too much down a rabbit hole basically. Um, so thank you again, Lisa, Dr. Ryan. Today, we're gonna talk about bloating, digestion, anxiety, and fat loss. So have you heard that your gut is your second brain? I think a lot of us have heard that term. Maybe we don't really know what it means. And what if we told you that you could actually lose weight by healing your gut, right? Could be as simple as that. Sometimes this is like just the missing factor in our weight loss journey can be our gut. But our gut is not just about weight loss. It's about so much more. And that's what we're going to get into today. Um, so first of all, I want to make sure you have subscribed to our channel. That way you don't miss any of these that we do. And it also helps you. You can go back and watch all the other ones that we've previously done. And we love your comments. So please comment, like, um, comment throughout this. Because we'll kind of, as we're going through each, like, topic of the gut we can answer questions along the way but then always at the end we will answer questions as long as it pertains to what we're talking about today yeah right yeah absolutely um, love the engagement yes the engagement is, is huge so um and if you're new to joining us welcome we love newcomers and we love repeats repeats that means you like listening to us and you've learned something from us and the feedback really has been great i oh, mean yeah. you know we're, i'm told very often that what we bring to the table is very educational. And again, we try to um, not get too scientific and too in-depth about something because that's not necessary. It's necessary just to understand and make the, you know, let us make the point so you guys can have a take-home message and something to act on. Um, and before we start, if you guys hear knocking, sorry. Yeah, sorry about that, We're next guys. to a warehouse, and apparently they're doing something, and um, the banging keeps happening. We are in one of our two warehouses here. And, yes. And uh, the next-door neighbors are banging away. Yes. Um, okay, so today we're going to cover the science of the microbiome, how to decrease bloating and improve digestion, which most people think about when we're talking about the gut, Sure. the relationship between anxiety and the gut, so there's the brain connection there, how to achieve fat loss by focusing on the gut, what factors impact the gut microbiome, and then how to really fix and work on the gut microbiome, which will come into our introduction of our Live Good Probiotic Gut Support Supplement yep. that we just recently launched. Super excited about that. So first, let's just kind of dive into the science of the microbiome, because maybe you've heard microbiome, maybe you've just heard gut. Let's talk about it. So the gut microbiome, the, the, the gut microbiome refers to all the microbes, okay, our bacteria, viruses, fungi in our intestines. And other stuff. And other stuff, yes, but the main categories. Yeah. Yeah. And they help us digest food. They support our immune system, mm -hmm. our heart, and our brain health. So it's these microbes, what's going on in our gut, affect so much of our entire body. So we have to understand that, um, the, the importance of it. So the gut microbiome begins to affect your body the moment you are born, the moment you enter this world. And as you grow, your gut microbiome diversifies, meaning it starts to get more in different kinds of microbial species. So we talk about what um, when we're born. So we get so much going through the birth canal and then also being that first, you know, breastfed from, from the mother. There's so much that goes on into, um, the beginnings of our, of our gut. Yeah. Those two things are really important too, right? I'm not to say that cesarean sections are, um, you know, unnecessary because they'd certainly serve a place right in, in medical, in the medical world. Sure. Um, but if, if you have the choice, you absolutely want to go for a natural vaginal birth and you absolutely want to breastfeed. Right. And even There's if it's no not long term, I mean, I understand everybody's right, to colonize. things are different, mm -hmm. but the very beginning, yep. that beginning colostrum, just those first few weeks are That's crucial right. to help the baby form that gut microbiome again. It starts that very beginning. Sure does. Okay? So, and finally, formula is caught on to some of the things that are happening as far as the microbes that are there and what they're doing and how they're breaking down certain fibers that the human body cannot break down. So it's fascinating science and it's pretty conclusive. It's not like it's just, uh, you know, speculative at this point. Like right. They're pretty sure that like, this is pretty certain that this is the way it goes. Sure. So. And just to give you like a little fun fact of what's going on, there are more bacterial cells. There are more bacterial cells uh -huh. than in the human body than, sorry, in the body than human cells. There are more bacteria cells than human cells. So it's pretty crazy. So we really need to pay attention to these because you also have to think about it too. Like not all bacteria are good. 
you know, right? So it's a diverse microbiome, but also a well-balanced microbiome is our goal. Yeah. So I really, it, again, it's very important for overall health to have a diverse and balanced microbiome. That is the number one goal for all parts of what's going on, whether we're discussing something about the brain, whether we're discussing the heart, the gut, it is extremely important to have a diverse and balanced microbiome. And you maybe have heard of the term dysbiosis. That's when we have an imbalance in our, in our gut mi uh, microbiome. So mm -hmm. maybe there's, there's more bad than good, or we just have a, too much of one kind and not, a, not enough of another. So we're, we're unbalanced, right? Um, I don't know. Do you have anything to elaborate on? Just kind of a little bit of the nitty gritty, the science behind it all. No, but accept, accepting the fact that the gut, the microbiome is so unique. It's N of one to you. It depends on where you live. It depends on all of your lifestyle habits. It depends on the medications you take. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Sure. But again, where you live, source local. Try to source local foods. Try to eat things that are as fresh as possible, that are ripe, that are high in phytonutrients and high in fiber. I mean, these are the things that we'll talk a little bit about today. But uh, again, trying to trying not to eat from things that are covered with barcodes, right? You don't want to eat too much processed yeah. food. And we'll talk about that today, but sure. certainly just you're going to cover so many of the bases of, of supporting the diverse microbiome just by choosing locally grown natural foods, right? Whole foods. Right. So, you know, you think about, let's just like think about our skin, for example, is uh, our skin is reflective of our skin health is sure. like a lifetime of aging. So maybe we never Wait, say that again. When Start maybe over. we a lifetime of aging, like of sun exposure. So our skin, our skin, we, we, we are no, born. Oh, you're saying just as this. Right. Skin. We okay. have like we have our skin, and as we age, sure. Depending on what we do and did with our skin, right? Sun exposure, diet, all that. Same thing goes with our gut. So like a lifetime of like poor diet and sure a, a bad lifestyle is yeah. really going to take toll on that gut. Now, it doesn't mean the one cool thing about the gut is it's very adaptive. Like you can make changes to the gut pretty quickly. Um, it doesn't mean that once they change, they're there. It's something you constantly always have to work on. But I don't want you to think if it's something like you've constantly been eating poor your, your whole life and lack of exercise, poor everything, and then you've decided to make a change that, you know, there's no turning back. You just have a lot of work to do. That's all. <laughs> I, were you trying to draw a parallel between, so you're just trying to use that skin as a metaphor, as an example yes. of how the gut can also show signs of aging. Right, but, but we, we don't, don't see our we gut. We don't see our, gut see our skin. In the, in the skin with excess sun and, yeah. and toxins. And Okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah. I follow. Thanks. Very cool. Clearing that up. <laughs> yeah. No, um, three to four days actually would be about the timeline you could expect to see a change if you if you made a major adjustment to your gut. Uh, or your food intake or by supplementing with a probiotic three to four days and you can start right. to see significant which is, changes. Which is awesome. And it again, is. it doesn't always stay there. So you have to keep working. You can't just do it and stop. Yeah. You gotta take care of it. Okay. So let's talk about how to de decrease bloating and improve digestion because maybe talk about digestion first, but like, can I talk about that real quick? Yeah. Like if you're going to go for food, right? You're going to eat food. The first thing you do is you get, you, you smell it. So your olfactory balls, we talked about this with essential oils, the impact of what happens, but from a digestive process, it's already started releasing enzymes and preparing the, 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 the mm -hmm. mucosal lining to go to work. So the mouth starts breaking it down with enzymes. And obviously as you, as you digest, it goes into the stomach where it gets tumbled, you know, and, and, pul and pulverized into into sort of a sludge at the same time it's releasing all these enzymes it's releasing all and of course the microbes the bacteria the virus the, the, the different things that are in there the fungi that all this stuff's going to work to break down this food uh, and a lot of stuff's happening in the gut but really most of your nutrients absorb in the small intestine so this is the digestive process right and then by the time it reaches your large intestine your colon it absorbs back the water and then you of course you void through your rectum but um, this whole process is such an important component to how we extract nutrients out of the foods we eat. And you'll hear that the bacteria, specifically the bacteria, play a giant role in this process. Right. So, and there's so many, I feel like you could probably relate to this, but there's so many of you that have been diagnosed with IBD, irritable mm, bowel disorder, mm -hmm. IBS, you know, which falls under it, but it's, it's, basically a category of not necessarily knowing what's going on, but it's a category of symptoms that we get bloating, gas, diarrhea, constipation. And it all, it all starts with a, you know, a disrupted microbiome. Sure. And, uh, but a lot of times, you know, it's hard to know the root cause, like what is going on, unless you go through testing, you know, you do stool samples, you get to test the microbes of what's going on in your gut. It, it, it's a hard thing to, 
to treat. So it just kind of lumped into like, these are your symptoms, you have IBD, okay? Um, so really what's going on when a lot of the, the gas and bloating um, and poor digestion happens is our food is not being digested properly. It's being fermented in our gut. Exactly. Uh, we get overgrowth of bacteria. We get it, yeast. Exactly. Um, and, and all of that going on will lead to the bloating and lead to the gas and discomfort. And I mean, I think there's nothing worse than a stomach ache. So I go, right. You know, so, like, so right here, yes, bloating, please. I need help with that. So Lisa was saying, and exactly what Lisa said, a dysbiosis, the wrong balance of bacteria, you, different things going on, whether it's medical, we'll talk about the causes that throw this dysbiosis into play here. But man, you get that food in there and now a lot of it doesn't digest. Some of this stuff, the fibers that cannot get broken down by the human body are now just in there fermenting and they're putting off gas and, and they're just, the bloating is a real problem, but it's a byproduct of, well, I know, keep going. No, I'm going to yeah. say something like example it's, here. It's just a byproduct of poor digestion right. because of the lack of the, 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 the dysbiosis. Sure. So think about when something in your fridge has been sitting there too long and it ferments and, and like maybe it say it's in a pop. plastic yeah. container and it kind of you know bloats out, swells, and you, or you open it, it explodes. I mean, that is what's going on in your gut. That is your bloating. There goes your, your gas. I mean, it's, it's horrible. So a lot of people that have the IBD, IBS, um, have a different composition uh, in their microbiome. They have less of the protective bacteria and more an abundance of the pathogenic, of the pathogenic bac yeah. bacteria. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, it's again, it's just something that you need to work on, but you need to understand first, like why it's going on, because there are so are so many other things that can affect the gut. So oh yeah, sure. Let's it gets go confusing. Through. Let's, let's get through some of those. Um, and I mean, I just want to just speak while well, I'm just saying this, like speaking from example, and always like, we talk about always finding the root cause. Yes. So um, a few years ago, I had all of a sudden out of nowhere, irritable bowel syndrome. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I didn't change anything. Everything seems right. I went to the GI doctor, got checked out. Everything was totally fine. And I just, I tried a low FODMAT diet. Like, I mean, I was doing everything by the books and nothing was working. And then thank God for my functional medical doctor, but she found out I had mold toxicity. You know, we had um, mold in our, which is, unfortunately very common in Florida because mm -hmm. of our high humidity. Um, but we had a leak that we didn't know about and we also had um, things going on in our air conditioning. So think, thankfully I was properly diagnosed and I was able to work on that. But again, it's again, you have to find the root cause because everybody has a different reaction to things. But when my toxicity went straight to my gut, it completely disrupted my gut. So um, yeah, so many things can happen. Um, okay, this is another big one when I talk about the gut is the second brain, right? There is a relationship between anxiety, depression, and your gut. There's an, a relationship between mood disorders and your gut. So that comes, the gut is the second brain. Um, now serotonin is our feel good hormone. And a lot of times with that, you think, okay, that comes from the brain, right? The central nervous system. Mm -hmm. But 95% of serotonin